In this video, I'm going to show you how to create easy stop motion videos like this. I'm going to break down how I shot this simple stop motion video, and I'm also going to walk you through the gear that was used, the lighting setup, my camera settings, and how I put it all together in Final Cut Pro. Let's do it. Small products actually make pretty good subjects for stop motion videos because they're easy to move around and you don't need a lot of space to shoot them. These Senzo Pods Plus are from Senzo Electronics and they're awesome. They have great quality sound, they connect easily with Bluetooth and this little charging case gives you about 30 hours of listening time. So really cool little earphones and I'll leave a link to these down in the description below if that's something that you want to check out. I'll also leave a link to all the gear that I'm going to use in this video. I'm all set up in my little home office and I'm going to quickly show you the gear that I'm going to use for the shoot as well as the lighting setup and the camera settings that you need to bear in mind when shooting stop motion. I'm going to be shooting this using the Sony a7 III and I've paired that with the Tamron 28 to 75 mm f2.8 lens which is a great little combo. I've mounted that on the Manfrotto tripod and then I have this Godox SL60W light as my key light. And I've got two of these wand lights here, which are made by Hagibus. These wand lights on the edges are really nice for creating highlights. If I turn the top left one off and then the bottom right one off, you can see the difference that that makes. I'll turn them back on again. I'll turn the key light off quickly and you can see that these wand lights just add that nice little highlight to the edges of that box. And if I put the key light back on, that's my full three light setup. For this lighting scenario, I'll be shooting at 1 over 100th of a second, f2.8 and my ISO is set to 200. There are two other settings that you need to bear in mind when shooting stop motion videos, and that is your focus mode and your white balance, because you don't want either of those to change in between frames. So what I'm going to do is make sure I'm focused on the box there, and then I'm going to set my focus mode to manual focus. That way my focus won't change in the middle of the scene. And then I'm also going to set my white balance from auto white balance to one standard one. Let's go with day white. Now all my images will have the same white balance and I won't have a change in color between the shots. The white balance doesn't matter too much if you're shooting raw images, but I like to do it anyway as a good habit. If you shoot JPEGs though, this will be an important step. Shooting raw means you'll have more room to edit and grade the images, but you'll have to do that first in something like Lightroom before exporting those JPEGs to send to Final Cut Pro. So you can do it in whichever way works for you. If you like what you've seen so far, please quickly hit that like button. It helps the channel out so much. In order to shoot this stop motion video, what I'm going to have to do is move this product a little bit at a time. And every time I move it, I'm going to shoot an image. It's incredibly important for this camera to stay super still. So what I'm going to do is pair my phone to the camera so that I can use that as a remote. You can use a remote, your phone, or a timer on the camera if that's something that you want to do, as long as your camera stays incredibly still. So that took me about 20 minutes to do. Let's jump into Lightroom and I'll show you how I prepare those images for Final Cut Pro. If you prefer to shoot JPEGs, you can bring those directly into Final Cut Pro and you can grade them there. I'll show you that in just a sec, but let's first take a look at these images in Lightroom. I'll click on this image here so I have a nice view of my product. I'll start with a white balance. I'll just select it there and I'll make a few tweaks to my contrast here. I want the whites to be nice and bright and I'll probably fade off the shadows a little bit. Create a little bit of a fade like this. And then these ready orange areas I'll desaturate somewhat and I might darken them as well just a little bit. That'll just make my product stand out nicely. Add a little bit of contrast, a little bit of clarity, and then I will also add a little bit of sharpening. I can probably do with a little bit of noise reduction as well. Nothing too hectic. And that is before and after. Now I want to apply that look to all the images. I'll hit Command A to select everything, and I'll just sync all of my settings there. Next, I'll hit File, export and I'll export all of these images into a JPEG folder on my hard drive.
My images are done exporting out of Lightroom and I'm in Final Cut Pro. So I'll just grab all of these images and drop them onto my timeline. You'll see that each of these images is four seconds long, which is far too long. So I'll hit Command A to select everything and then Control D to change the duration, which I'll set to two frames and hit Enter. Next, I want to get rid of these black edges. So with all these images selected, I'll change the type here from Fit to Fill. And let's play that back to see what we've got. There are two changes I'd like to make here. I think when this docks here, it happens a little too quickly. So this frame here, I think I'm going to duplicate three times by holding down Alt and just making a copy. And this frame here, I think I'll duplicate another three times as well. Then we'll have a set of pods that docks and then opens and moves down. That looks much better. And the second change I'd like to make is how slowly my hand comes in here to take this box away. I think once we see my hand, let's go from there. Every second frame we can delete. And I think that'll just make it faster just as I drag this out of frame. Okay, Shift Z to fill my timeline with everything that's on it and I'll play that back. I'll select everything and hit Alt G to create a compound clip. Call that Senzo Pods. If you prefer to shoot JPEG over raw images, now would be the time to grade your clip because you can apply any color adjustments to this one compound clip. Next, I'd like to add a couple of little animated music notes here. I think when these headphones pop out and start moving would be a good time. So right about there as they start to move. And I have a preset here from one of the graphics bundles that I use that has these little animated music notes, which I think is really cool. So I'll drop that on there and I'll just nudge these a little bit until they start to appear right about there. I'll set the scale to half of that and let's bring them up over here. So we'll have these little music notes that pop up. That's a bit small. Maybe let's go 110. And these little music notes will just pop up from the case. But I want this to look like a stop motion animation as well. So what I'll do is I'll create a compound clip of these music notes. And then what I'll do is I'll go to the way I want them to start. I think they can appear about there. Trim that and just move it back a little bit. Then I'll go forward two frames and I'll make a cut. I'll go forward another two frames and I'll make a cut. And I'll just keep doing that until I've done this whole section. Then what I need to do is create a hold frame for each one of these. So I can go to the beginning of each of these little sections, have my cursor at the beginning, hit Shift H to create a hold. And then I'll come over here and hit Alt closed square brackets to trim it. And I can just quickly go through and do that for all of these little clips. And now I've essentially created little stop motion frames for these music notes. I'll play that back so you can see what it looks like. And I also don't want these notes to appear on the box itself. So I'll create a compound clip using Alt G, I'll call this music notes group. And then I'm going to add a draw mask effect onto this group. And I want to make sure that none of these notes go over the top of this box. And I'll just hit invert. And I can feather that just a little bit. And now if I play that back, none of these notes will appear over the actual box. The last step is to add some music and I use Artlist for all of my music. I made a video called five tips for choosing the right music for your videos. And I'll leave a link to that in the description below if you'd like to learn more about that. Creating a simple stop motion video is really easy to do. And one last time, here is the final result. If you enjoyed this kind of video, let me know in the comments down below and maybe I'll start doing more of these shoot and edit breakdown tutorial videos. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on future videos and giveaways. See you in the next one.